I will try to talk about how science fiction <coughs> novels in general get written, but I will illustrate it with one particular one. Science fiction, a novel has everything that the last video had, say, all that he was talking about, the story and the rest of it, but it has some very special ingredients, and that is what I want to talk about. I will talk about how one particular science fiction novel got written. In fact, in particular, this one, this one, and more or less told, tell the story of how we wrote it, though not the story in the book. Wonderful quote from Stephen Baxter about this book. Classic science fiction, a startling and original premise, a character-driven plot exploring that premise with great imagination and ingenuity, recalls Nibben at his best with better science, Stephen Baxter. Well, if you are science fiction fans, you know that Stephen Baxter is a very big name, and uh, Nibben is a bigger one, so it's a bit like Rama comparing you favorably with Krishna, and I was dazed for a day. But the main point is that this illustrates, this is science fiction, so I can use it as an example. So, let's see how it was written in terms of plot design and world design. Startling and original premise. I'm not going to tell you the startling and original premise because that's a spoiler. <coughs> but consider a less startling and less original one because people have written books about it before. A very nice one. And how you might explore it. Suppose you have matter duplicators you can make copies of everything, anything, including people. So this would have all kinds of implications. I can quote several wonderful novels on that, but I'm not going to, no time. No more mass production. That is the iPhone production facility. You would make one iPhone and duplicate it. Can you copy your star employees and file the rest? <laughs> if your wife is co copied, or your husband, which is your wife? Who owns the house? House is a, one of the few things that can't be copied because it has land and land can't be copied, can't be increased. Most property, but not all, becomes intellectual property fascinating things to explore. But, hard science fiction, you've got to be consistent in your science, in your world. And think about what matter duplicators would mean. They require radically new physics. Okay, that's fine. That's what science fiction does. But if a new physics can do that, it can completely control energy matter conversion because it's much easier to just do raw energy loose than to produce atom by atom copies of DNA and so on. So clearly you would have almost unlimited energy if you have matter duplicators. That implies things like planet busters, spacecraft close to speed of light, synthetic planets, and on and on. Which again, it will be a grand book, but it would make exploration of the human aspects. Can a, copy, can a company copy its star employees? Who owns a house? It would rather distract from those factors. So how do you focus on those? Well, plot method, humans get a limited version from outside without being able to explore the planet-busting implications. And that is exactly what the novels that did do matter duplicators did. 
Okay, how to do that, how to do it in the book, how to make a plot out of it. Colony vessel crash lands on the planet. The technology drops because of the crash. They've lost so much. No electronics. They discovered duplicators. Well, they discovered the things we call synthe, and I won't tell you what they are because you've got to read the book if you want to read the book. I won't spoil it for you. Synthe are different from matter duplicators, but I think they are even more interesting. But not from local intelligent aliens on that planet because human alien contact isn't where we want to focus that's another interesting line of story but not uh, our first question and anyway how come the aliens don't have planet busters and the rest of it you had the same problem so from local unintelligent aliens Plants. About two billion years ago, a combination of mutations gave plants synthe. Evolution led to a huge variety of ways of using these things, and not just plants, because you get symbiotic animals using the synthe that are actually from the plants. And the humans land, discover this, and synthetic technology, which they have no way of knowing how it works, they can work it. It replaces the earth science and technology they lost. But it takes them generations to explore the possibilities. In one book, it's hard to make that the plot. So, plot-wise, 2,000 years later, a group of six young star folk also crash and explore the society the first humans have made. So they get the first view of the planet, it looks like this. They give Hebrew letters to the continents, that's all they know. And they detect that one of these sites either here or here, has a rescue beacon, the button that they can press roughly, that would get them rescued. But they don't know which <coughs> one. Now, narrative inevitability means that they pick the wrong one. So we get to experience a lot of the planet as they travel from one to the other. That has been a basic plot element for nearly 3,000 years, maybe more. And it still works very well. Okay, but now how did they get there? Not at sublight speed, because plausible stars with planets, they take tens of years, hundreds of years to reach if you travel even with very close to the speed of light. So you have to have some kind of faster than light travel, but the usual methods in science fiction books, they ignore relativity pretty completely. They say you can jump from here to here at the same time. But time, the same time between different places cannot be defined. It doesn't exist. So the casual use of wormholes and jump drives, it really implies time travel. That could, would make another talk to fill in, but that's not what this book wants to explore. I didn't want to write science, a time travel book. <clears throat> Forty years ago, I wrote a book on general relativity, and I got too much of a scientific conscience to just assume wormholes. So, a karma movie field increasing everywhere according to all observers. Jumps are only possible between space times with equal k, k value, but it increases faster according to local matter observers where local matter is denser. So, here you see the contours of equals value are closer space than there. However, 
if that kept going, you'd be able to jump from here to a point far enough in your past that it would actually be able to reach you in a signal at the speed of light, you'd have train travel again. I don't want to write a train travel story. And nature doesn't want to either. So what we get is a simultaneity quake. And this point, you get at the same moment, eight years seems to go by on that one. So we work that out. And that had interesting, oops, it has interesting possibilities. We didn't make a great deal of it in the book directly, but it affects the culture because you can't run an empire if you can't, if, if planets disappear from view. So it goes quite quickly. So that's how they got there. But they see mysteries. People all over. No ships or planes. Yeah. We, it really matters the difference between shallow places on the continental shelf and the deep places, the abyss. So we had to work out the marine geology. So this is the map of the whole planet. And for the history of this planet, we needed a deep abyss here. So that means a subduction zone had to be here. But that means a volcanic line of volcanoes there. That's just the way geology works. However, our first map of this planet had a sketch of that planet continent like this. Okay, same shape, but no volcanoes there. So, we changed to this. Volcanoes. For this book, we moved mountains. So, I won't use spoilers, and also I'm short of time, so I won't tell you the effects of Sinte on transport, very big, ecology, very big, war makes total different, sex is very strange, cooking, religion, come on, medicine, entertainment, engineering, Goodness sake. Not cautiously. But we argued our way through all those factors in a lot of detail. You're free to find errors. And the point is that this process is typical of hard science fiction. This book is not special that way. This is what the game is. Writing and reading hard science fiction. And reading it means arguing in your mind with it. That's one reason why we've got so many co-author books. People with two authors rather than one in science fiction, much more than in other fields, because creating a world is easier for two, like creating a person. In fact, we created more than a world. We created a whole galactic society. And when our heroes get off the planet, when they finally reach that rescue beacon and get rescued, even that is complicated, Syntec have very disruptive effects. There are all those possibilities and a technological society manages to see much more of them than the primitive society 
of the colonists. So in the sequel, which is called Rockstar and is not yet published, we do get to Planet Busters. So we have our cake and eat it, so to speak. So, thank you very much. Uh, Synthay.com is full of spoilers. Maybe you'd like to look at it after reading the book, or maybe you have the attitude, don't have the attitude. I can't read the Gospel of St. Matthew because St. Mark spoiled it by giving away the ending. I don't think that way about fiction, but a lot of people do. Anyway, a lot of details of the ecology, and we have fan art, space for it anyway, fan fiction, fan science, fan engineering. Think about what designs you might make with these very strange things, Synthe, as a forum for discussion, and so on. And with that, I thank you.